put effort to it, you know, things do work out. You know, that's all it is, you know, if you're really passionate about something, you know. Yeah. Just put put your heart, if your heart's in it too, you know, you'll get shit done, you know. You just got to be persistent. Mm -hmm. It's like the more I feel like you're okay with it, the more, like, you can accept that you're going to die one day. Yeah, and, like, the less scared you'll be of doing shit and you'll have, you'll take chances. Hey everyone, how's it going? Today you're joining me with Sodomy, another local San Jose band. Um, when I looked you guys up and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what do, what would I classify you guys as? I'd probably say death metal, but is there like a specific one used by you guys? Are you just death metal? Or are you like a specific subgenre? Because it's 2020 now. Uh, yeah, I don't right? You have to be really specific, nah, Jenny. We're, I feel like we're just death metal. We have other influences, but we would just call ourselves death metal. Other yeah. people. In the past, like our shows have labeled us as brutal death grind, and I don't know where they get that from. I mean, yeah. we are influenced by grind and like yeah. brutal death metal, but like we never call ourselves that. Because I just think death metal in itself is a broad term. Like, if you really think, look at all the like original old school death metal bands. Like, there were some that were more slower, like Obituary, you know, had menacing parts. Mm -hmm. but then you'll have bands like Suffocation or Cannibal that's more blast beady, you know, like. More thrashier. faster, more thrashier, you know? Okay. At least early. Character. So, like, you know, really, I feel like death metal itself is broad enough, you know? So we just go with death metal, you know? Yep. With kind of, like, where death metal is, like, now, it's, like, more technical and clean, like, some actually, like, more regular vocals were scuttled. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. I'm about to say. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, we're on the, we're on the, lo more, we're, we're on the lower spectrum. Yeah, more, more, like, traditional, just, like, really deep, you know? Oh, my bad. <laughs> you got one? <laughs> no, one no, no. Oh, yeah, I got this one. No, that's cool. Uh, well, so on that note, right, like, so you guys have been around for a long time, right? And I feel yeah. like you guys have been consistent with your sound? Uh, oh, with our sound? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I can, I can, um, I can, I can, yeah, I can do that. Hold on one second. So, um, I was 15, and I was like, I want to start a band. I honestly don't even know how it happened, but there was this band called Sacrifix and they were a cover band and they had like these members from the scene back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, they borrowed my drum set one time for a show on New Year's from 2012 to 2013. And then I just started hanging out with them and eventually they like split up and me and one of the guitars formed Sodomy 2013 sometime. I wasn't even in the band Yeah, he yet. wasn't even in the band yet. Yeah, so. And we went through a lot of lineup changes before we actually like played our first show. And even the first show or two, we still had like random changes. Like we had some other members of Sacrifix come in and out. And then people who were related to them come in and out. It just didn't work out and it ended up being a two piece, just me and the original guy. Mm -hmm. We played probably like, like three shows, four max. I don't remember four, but four is the max. I know we played at least two, but I'm pretty sure it was like three or four official shows. Mm -hmm. And then we were kind of like, the dude would always play out of tune. So I guess that gave us like a unique a unique sound. Kind of like, you know, early Sepultura, just like, it was just really raw and nasty. Yeah, so I, I guess that's where the idea was just being more a raw band, you know, like. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, event, you know, well, he left and uh, I was like, fuck, well, I'm sure I looked. And I knew this dude and I was like, hey, dude, can you just be like a, uh, a fill in for now until I like, find a, a permanent replacement? He's like, yeah, dude, like, I'll do it, but like I'll only I'll only be a little bit, you know, until you find a permanent member. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> only for a bit. Yeah, he's like I'm really. Busy and then when right was now. that? Like 20, 2013. 2013. Yeah. So here I still am. That's it. So yeah, that's how that happened. And then we played shows, and it was funny because we actually probably had what like two weeks max before Thanksgiving. Yeah, before my first show. First, like, first show. I was just learning all by ear, you know. Like I seen them practice, so like I could just you know see the riffs through. It. The hand movements and just yeah. kind of like learn the style and the wrists you know they weren't that that, that complicated because going back to the question you asked uh like sodomy actually when, when they first started it was more thrash thrashy yeah, thrash, more like thrashy, you know kind of thrashy kind of oriented where it's just more catchy like hooks and like just more thrash riffs you know like the, the chug it you know dun, 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 dun. but basically like after a while when i joined with him you know we wanted to separate you know the early stuff from stuff we were writing, you know, so we, we started going more in a heavier route, you know. But once me and him, like, started trying to write more music, you know, just, like, a little bit more technical, more tighter, and just more faster in, in general, you know. Okay. So then with you becoming, like, the main member at this point, 
what stopped it from turning into like a speed metal band? <laughs> uh, me? Yeah, I just think don't get me wrong, because like when we when I was in the band, like I was kind of you know in my teenage years, I was more into like thrash bands, you know, like Exodus. Oh yeah. You know all, all the old school speed metal like various shit, you know, mm-hmm. and like, but like. I don't know. I just think at the time, it's just like a natural progression. When you're a metalhead, you, you like thrash first, and then you're like, oh, you find out about death. And yeah, then you're like, oh, I want to be death now. Yeah. You know, because that's kind of our attitude. Like, Because I also like Possessed, you know. Mm-hmm. And Possessed was basically, they were a thrash band, but they wanted to be better, you know, fat, more brutal than thrash. Mm-hmm. So they basically kind of did that. And for me, I like old school metal up the ass, like Judas Priest and all that shit. But, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's just a natural progression. You want to be a little bit heavier and faster. But it still has those key traits of old school metal you know Mm -hmm. that's just like really powerful fast raves you know so then you guys well i'm going based on your spotify if it takes us all right oh yeah we can explain our music release (laughs) yeah say like you guys had one duet wells and then we're working on another one right now yeah so okay so when he joined the band uh we like we're we're finding our sound right like we still yeah that's like he he probably i don't think you were he wasn't even fully into like speed metal at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like that wasn't even a factor at the time to think about, mm-hmm. right? So he joined, and for like the first year or so, we just played like the songs we had, like the other dude's songs, mm-hmm. and we threw in a few songs of our own here and there. And but we were we were calling ourselves kind of more death thrash. We were still thrashy. Yeah, we yeah. Wanted to be right. heavier. Yeah. And it wasn't until 2014, like mid 2014, maybe when we started like. Um, writing heavier shit. So when death dwells, most of the songs except when death dwells and drenched were all written from from late 2014 to 2016. So those yeah. songs we have been around. Yeah, but it's just no one had heard them even live. Like yeah. barely anyone. Like had we heard barely them. play them, and we just at the time, you know, I think you know when we were teenagers and shit, we or you know we we just didn't really like have a, a pro- find a proper way. To like record our stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we, we had, we had, we had the ideas, you know, like all set up, and it's like, not till like, and then after a, a while, you know, like we had those ideas, but never got it recorded officially, and then like you know, kind of took a break for a while. I, I wouldn't say it's just like it was a hiatus. It like a hiatus, you know, like you know, I was taking care of stuff, and you know, I was, I was, I think it was mostly just me being busy, but then after a while, you know, like, you know, you you go back to love playing music you know yeah. you can't kind of leave it mm-hmm. you know and, and so when we finally came back and had revamped the songs we're like we knew a guy who could record us so it's like why not just do it you know yeah, a, ru- a rough demo you know yeah. that's what when death dwells is it's just like we want to get all the shit that we never got a chance to we actually still have songs that didn't make the demo that are gonna make this next release and we also have songs that we just don't play no more like we have we had a ton of music that went without recording yeah. and um what was I going to say? Fucking... Oh, yeah. So, we took two hiatuses, I think, right? Like, there was, like, the one major one. It was from... When was it? It's it's, it's weird because we took, like, several breaks. Like, yeah. But there was, like, two main ones. The last one, we came back December 2018th. We played our first show in, like, two years almost. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think we took one. We were writing music and playing shows, but we weren't really, like, doing much else like in terms of developing yeah in terms of developing yeah and then because like we were known like people know us locally from even back then the more local shows you know like like, even though we didn't have music you kind of still build a reputation you know like you see the same kind of same people at shows you know because like we made like a batch of 50 shirts and they all sold out like that so like I mean, it was all mainly people who have known us and probably wanted branch and shit from back since back then yeah. yeah and we actually, after like the whole lineup change, or like when he joined, it was just it's just been us two. Oh, actually, yeah, we had a bass player, and then we split ways, and then it was just us two again, like the main two. And we actually had Philip from a sector play with us. So yeah, he was in the band for, for a while. while. Too, yeah, played a couple shows with us. And I think like kind of before, a septic was really building, like when he was kind of starting that, he was like with us he was too. With us, yeah, you know, so like, it's pretty cool, you know, like him as well, like. You know, I feel like he developed his sound from his past bands, you know, he, he progressed the more heavier sound that he wanted to do, you know, mm-hmm. just like us, you know, we wanted to do more heavier, you know, kind of like extreme, definitely. And stuff. then it wasn't until that 
second hiatus after coming back. We relearned all the songs because I mean we still kind of knew them because we played them for years. We relearned them, revamped them, recorded them, and then we started playing shows. And then we got into the studio, did the one death dwells just because we wanted something yeah, out because it had been years and like yeah. I wanted to start working on new shit. And then we dropped that just to get it out of the way. And what we want to do is to do them justice because it's like a demo, you know. They're I I think they're great songs like. And I think that demo doesn't really show, like what your full capability. Yeah, yeah because like of the song, because yeah. it's very, very raw. It's raw. It's very, demo. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. Like I like the rawness, but at the same time, you want to still be the clarity there, you know. Yeah. So, like you know, there's a lot of stuff that you know, because when we did the demo, it was just like one, like overhead mic. Yeah, it was two. two it, it's basically mics. what you're hearing on the demo is like a live show. Yeah, basically. You know, like just recorded in all a room. in one take. Yeah, too. all like so. You know, compared to, like, our, like, you know, singles that we came out with, you know, in Dead Space, that, like, we actually went through the whole process of recording stuff separately, you know, like, <coughs> record, recording the main rhythm and drums and then, you know, doing, guitar, you know, second guitar and bass later, you know. I did the bass part because, you know, like, with that, that's just a thing, you know, us creatively, writing-wise, we work better just like us, us ourselves, too. you know. Yeah. And that goes to answer that question that you had about thinking about members. Yeah. Yeah, we have thought about it. Because I definitely would like to fill in the sound, especially for... Live shows. Like, a live show, yeah. But, uh, I don't know. We just kind of, like... We have, like... When we write music, when we get in there, it's like that. You know, like, at the, uh, at the push of a button, we write songs and riffs, and it clicks. And we don't want to mess it up by bringing someone else into it. Because we... To go back... Sorry. No, go, go we had to go back. We did have, like, a... A bass player, right? And like, it felt like he kind of like didn't really add anything to the band, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, like if you got someone that, and then like there'd be like riffs I'd have to teach him, you know, and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, and then we had conflict writing songs. You know, he wanted to do a riff like this, and we kind of didn't like it, or he didn't want to write play this riff that we wrote. Yeah. So you know, it was like a conflict with that. So like. Yeah, because at the same time, you know, like it's good to have an open mind and take ideas, but. You also want to stand up like for what you want to sound like. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, like you, you need that, that that cohesion, like you know, and but yeah, that, that just wasn't there. But I I definitely still think about it, you know, because like who wouldn't want to have a more fuller sound, you know? Yeah. Like I would love to be a full piece, like a four or five piece, but then like, sure, let's just have a vocalist spinning his head, like right simultaneously, like, like you know, course <laughs> grinder from Cannibal. Yeah. Which is like, uh, and uh, I'm sure it would be easier for him to yeah. to not do a. Uh, vocals and play because actually well back to what we were talking about his first show we had a week or two of max to prepare for him and i don't think you've ever done vocals before yeah i you? never really done so it's like i'm like i'm just doing this as a temporary gig and like i'm still a vocalist you know yeah. so he played guitar and we had no lyrics uh fun fact we actually never had any lyrics at all until like we started writing when that was. yeah yeah i basically. mean recording when that was. yeah so we every show he was always fucking just freestyling. Like we had choruses and stuff. Yeah, he was freestyling everything. No, yeah. no, no. Lyrics. Like, like we had choruses for songs, but I was just like. But they were also made up. They yeah, just caught they, on they over just, time. Yeah, they just yeah. caught on over time. So, like so, you know, like we were younger, so like we were just improvising stuff, yeah. and but at the same time, you know, like we were capable of pulling it off. Which is just lazy. We're, we're like kids. Yeah, That's like we found out about smoking weed and <laughs> just smoked weed and real music. Real music, yeah. And we got older and got worse. And then it got worse. Yeah. <laughs> our vices got, our, yeah. But then our music got better, so know, that tells you something. No, just kidding. Yeah. Well, so, like, that's kind of funny. So then, when the time came to, like, go live and, and sing, yeah. were you just making sounds at Sound Death Metal, or would you still, like, did you have your own lyrics that you would go to, like, to fill in the spot? Suicide. For, yeah, yeah. For, for some parts, I would just, like, repeat, you know, just certain chants and like phrases that i feel like would go well together the, the you know? name of the song yeah the name the of the song or, or, chorus. or you know just that. really just blasphemous sacrilegious stuff you know just cause, uh, because because yeah like you know it's kind of just what i think about like traditional like 80s metal is just, or like old school metal is really just trying to piss off you know religion and all that shit it's just trying to be obscene you know but eventually you know we did like we do structure our songs with lyrics and like, you know, now it's like, that's how we write the song more around it, you know, like uh, a topic. around a topic, a topic now, yeah. you know, and a chorus, you know, and like 
you know, obviously it's same like same topic as most death metal bands like obscene mm-hmm. and grotesque things and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have a I have like a set um vision, I guess. Just our fascination with you know morbid stuff. I yeah, guess. yeah, I guess yeah. That's it. So like I have like a it's like a certain um topic uh for lack of a better word topic subject matter whatever. So. Even though we didn't have lyrics when we wrote them, we did write lyrics for, for kind of for when death dwells, and they're all more just kind of like just grotesque stuff, like okay, like ritualistic asphyxiation is like, like it's kind of like a ritual of so, uh, killing someone by asphyxiation for a ritual, you know, and grotesque exhumation is like grotesquely exhuming someone, <laughs> you know, just like a bunch of like just morbid stuff, like stench of disembowelment is like obviously the smell when you're gutting someone over, and, yeah. You know, Stuff like that. And drenched, I don't know, drenched is what? Drenched in darkness or what? Like the overcoming, the overcoming of darkness or drenched in like... No, just being succumbed by darkness. That one's more like, that's kind of like more of a edgy type of sound, but it's like, you know, it's it's just something, you know, atmospheric too, you know? Because, you know, we, we definitely like a darker atmosphere and shit. Yeah. So that, that's, that's for when death dwells. And then when death dwells like it's all basically just kind of more like morbid stuff kind of like decomposing and shit like, yeah it's kind of just a reflection of i feel mortality too you know like like a lot of people are scared of death and shit you know yeah. and but it's like dwells, it dwells. but it's like the more i feel like you're okay with it the more like you can accept that you're gonna die one day yeah, and like the less scared you'll be of doing shit and you'll have you'll take chances yeah i feel like you will take that because like you know that's why there's a whole genre on this you know because people like aren't afraid of it you know like yeah. it's kind of just like something really humanistic and real you know if you really think about it mm-hmm. i mean some of the themes might be really kind of out there but at the same time you know message. it's the yeah, message you're yeah, trying to send exactly. you know like you kind of get people's attention by being really you know outrageous yeah, like it's, outrageous like we try know? to still be like it's the 80s and the 90s like with the extreme yeah movies, yeah you know what i mean kind of upstage because like Cause if you're gonna do everyone it, was trying to if you're gonna do it like everyone, that, you're gonna do it like yeah. that, you know. Everyone was trying to that's, do it. That's, out, every, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Everyone's like trying to outdo everyone back in the day. Like, oh, how could you be more extreme? The music got more extreme, and the the lyricism got more extreme. And I guess it still exists to this day to catch people's attention, you know. But it's not only that. We don't rely on on shock factor. I think our music's pretty good. Yeah, I think we just you know just start playing as well and just doing it as a two piece, you know. Like, yeah. I feel like that impresses people. Yeah, and for being a two-piece, it's like, I don't know, I think it's pretty good. Um, Release, because we have the next three releases already planned out. So we have this this old one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So When Death Dwells was just like, the old shit we wanted to put out, boom. It's in the demo version, so. Yeah, Yeah. check it out, yeah. So this next one, we're going to go with uh, Feast of the Mutilator, because that was also a song we wrote, wrote back in 2016, but we wanted to have that have its own topic. And that was going to be the next release. But after recording the Dead, the singles, Dead Space and Event Horizon, we're going to just have the Dead Space EP. Okay. And it's going to be three or four new songs, which is going to be Dead Space, Event Horizon, and then two that we have in the works. And then we're going to have three, three or four from the When Death Dwells, like just um, kind of re-recording. Yeah, re-recording. Yeah. Yeah, re-recording. Oh, re-recording. Yeah. yeah. Just to have like a, a, a yeah. Right. Still want to hear that? Um, so yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, cause we have a lot of music, right? And then we also want to re-release, um, the, when that, those recordings with better quality, but we also don't want to like just remaster it. I feel like that'd be kind of like a waste, you know, of like resources. Yeah. You want to get a, a new fresh recording of it. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is split when that dwells and do three songs on the dead space. EP and then three songs on the piece or something like that along those lines, right? It's kind of like b- bringing back, you know, like demo tracks. Yeah, yeah, because it is a demo. We call yeah. it a demo EP, but it's it's basically it's just a demo. It's just a longer demo. Yeah. And um, so why not something like when West keeps dwelling? Yeah, yeah no, dude, we have drugs. We have drugs. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's we, like, we we keep. That's we, it's an ongoing drug. It's like, we just, like uh, death is dwells, dwells continues to dwell. Know, yeah, yeah, death yeah, continues yeah. to dwell. Um, still dwelling. Yeah, I know, what yeah. else are we on? Yeah. That's it. It's like two series. Like, yeah. yeah, still dwelling, <laughs> the dwelling or something. You know, just, <laughs> the dwelling. <laughs> the dwelled something. Yeah. yeah. But then, so um, so we split it out, right? So the death race EP is gonna have like 
three of the old songs and then four new songs, right? So it's still gonna be pretty cool in my opinion. And what's it called? It's gonna be themed around well, you know the game Dead Space? Yeah, that's so, actually one of my questions. Yeah, is, yeah. is that where it came from? Yeah, that's where yeah. it came from. So like if you read the lyrics, it, you'll you can match it to the game. And uh Event Horizon it's about have you seen the movie, Event Horizon? With uh, what's yeah. his name? Uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne, the guy from Space the Ma- Matrix. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've seen the thumbnail. It's like a space horror movie. Yeah, kind of like um, what would you? Get? I would I would say um, maybe compare like um to what's that movie? Like Alien. Hellraiser to uh, Alien uh, and Hellraiser. Like a mix. I it's guess, like yeah. Alien meets Hellraiser, like with all these like corpses and dead bodies and cool. and like you're going to hell. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> Doom. Yeah. You know when the and then the rock comes and saves everyone. No, I'm just the rock is the bad guy. What no, I know. No, but I'm saying, oh, in Doom, he yeah, is the bad guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Twist at the end. No, so but yeah, it's, it's based on yeah, that. Event space. Horizon. No, uh, the no Event Horizon. Right, yeah. Event Horizon. So yeah. that space, it's like a. Apparently, for its time, a lot of people were like really scared by the sh- and shocked and scarred by that movie, apparently. I mean, it's not that bad. But yeah. I guess for the time, you know? Um, it's kind of like, it's to give you a quick rundown, it's just like. This dude builds this um, this thing that can um, open up wormholes, right? And then he puts it in a ship, sends it out. They go to I think it's Jupiter or Saturn to do the the jump, the you know whatever they're gonna do. Like it's like a, it's a, I don't know, it's a fucking machine. And then it disappears. And then like X amount of time later, it comes back, and you know they send the rescue team out there. And then it comes back from another dimension and it was possessed by something from that dimension. And it's just crazy. But that's what it's based on. So Dead Space is going to have like a, a kind of like a parasitic, parasitic uh, space zombie type of vibe. So yeah. it's Dead Space, Event Horizon. I don't know if you played the video game Halo. Yeah. Uh, the Flood. Halo. We're going to, yeah, yeah, I love Halo. Yeah. The, uh, shit. the Flood is going to be like, we're going to make a song about like the Flood, probably call it like the Maw or something. That's like the last level of Halo 1. And it's just going to be about the Flood. You know, like it's like parasitic Parasite. zombies, like alien zombies, kind of. That's going to have that theme. So it's Dead Space, Red Horizon, something about the Flood from Halo. Uh, aliens, the movie Aliens, we're going to have some shit like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's Dead Space. Yeah, because that's, you know, our also. Just fascination with like horror, you know, just yeah. really just grotesque, and you know, and, and video games too. Yeah, we're gamers, games. so yeah. mostly this guy. I'm a real gamer. Yeah, I'm a gaming chair. I just play like Rocket League. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good though. Yeah. See, so that that's that's like the vision for. It's not even out. I mean, it's kind of out, it's half out. I guess that space. Feast of the Mutilated is gonna be kind of like what's that one movie cannibal holocaust oh yeah is that what it's called yeah cannibal cannibal holocaust. Holocaust. Um, it's gonna be more and then uh green inferno it's yeah gonna, it's kind of more like of a cannibal tribe you cannibal know tribe style you know kind of just like brutal stuff but yeah. have it be centered around cannibalism yeah. tribe stuff primitive kind of like because in those movies you know these people stumble upon like a more you know indigenous tribe in this rainforest or something like and that cannibals but and they find out that they're cannibals and they literally like kill and eat people and shit you know and they feed it to their family, you know? So it's kind of like another reflection of, you know, just... Morbid stuff. Morbid, morbid stuff, but also, you know, like, when you when you fuck with, like, indigenous people, too, you know, it's, like, kind of what, what you deserve, you know? Yeah. If you try to take advantage of them. Or try to run them out of their land. Yeah, because at the same know. time, you know, even though they're doing grotesque and really fucked up shit, it's, you know... It's, it's kind of like... It's nature. Yeah, it's nature. It like, it's kind of nature, you know, survival of the fittest. Like, like yeah. even nowadays, like... They're kind of like still having that food chain against us, you know, keeping the upper class separate from the lower class too, you know. But you don't get in trouble. I mean, you don't get mad at a fucking a lion eating a fucking a zebra or something, whatever they eat. You know, it's nature. And for tribes, when they're out of touch, you know, when they're in their indigenous place, you know, they don't have like that shit. You know, yeah. like they don't have like. What's that? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, yeah, they don't have that, that kind of shit. Too. Yeah, they Walmart, have, but it's not like different, <laughs> different mindsets, and it's just more like primitive, like how yeah, it was. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like you know, we're too like uh, we're too we're too um, protective and yeah, all yeah. of life and shit. You know, like I mean, I would not want to be the fuck out there. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for <laughs> indoor plumbing. I, I love indoor plumbing. Love you know, but like we are detached from life. life. No, from like you know just the basic shit. Like people can't hide and gather no more. No, I mean, you know, yeah. well, whatever. But that's the topic, you yeah, know, of, of Feast, you know, just that kind of, like, 
like basically a Cannibal Holocaust, Green Inferno. Check out those movies. And then the last topic, but I mean the last release, which is gonna be like the main album. Like I think these are gonna be all EPs, right? Yeah. Maybe, probably EPs, and then the album is gonna be. I don't want to give up the name, but I have a sick ass name that I've been saving for years, and that one's gonna be more of our whole style in one. Yeah, full on. Just, just full on brutality and just like the best of sodomy in one album. It's gonna be great. I'm excited for that one. But yeah, so then I guess you have to find interview us again to find that. Yeah, I know you gotta interview us in like ten years. Not because that's, that's how long it's gonna take. Uh, just, <laughs> so the way you guys like. Because clearly you guys have already thought this through, right? Yeah, you, yeah. The whole process yeah, yeah, the whole process. Place. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it a thing where you guys are writing songs and then, like, kind of say, okay, this song is going on. Like, I'm going to fill the slot here in those songs. This song's not going to come out for another two other albums. Or is it more you write one album at a time in order? I think right now, you know, we're just, like... We're focusing on this one. Yeah, yeah. We're but, doing one at a time, but like you know, but like we do have other songs. Yeah, that are like coll- time. collection song. Yeah. You know, songs that fit more other topics. You know, which is kind of like coincident. It just happens. Yeah, yeah. It just happens. You know, we don't we don't say. Well, sometimes we'll sit down. And we'll be like, "Hey, we're gonna write a song about this, and it's gonna go like this," and then yeah. we do that. But sometimes we're just like, "All right, let's just let's just do something," and it happens. But as far as how we're planning Dead Space and Feast of the Mutilated, it's like. We've already had that idea, that idea for a while, you know, okay. and it's just like that's we're kind of just working in that kind of headspace, one at, one at a time, you know. That makes sense. But it's just that we had that feast of the mutilated idea since we wrote the song, you know. So we felt like that wouldn't fit as well in dead space. In dead space, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Topic wise and theme thematic wise, you know. So a Dead Space guy, I've heard the song Dead Space yeah, yeah, yeah. on your Spotify, but for the album, are you guys like planning on incorporating like space sound effects? Not like in a goofy way, but like yeah, I mean, more like um, atmospheric in like a digital way versus. Well, probably not in the songs themselves. Probably like um, it'd be its own song, kind of like you know um, what's the thing they have in the middle of a. You know how like back in the nineties, like Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg had intermissions. There you go, intermissions. Oh, okay. It was like a. They would like take a smoke break and just talk in between songs. Well, we're probably gonna do that, but with like sound effects. That'd be good. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, I know. It's always cool hearing like space themed like death metal, you know. Well, like, it, it's space themed yeah. lyrical wise, but it's yeah. we're not blood incantation. No, yeah, we're just, yeah. We're, 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 not, we're not gonna do like we're not gonna sound like we're in space. It's just the lyrical content. Yeah, like our our music is still the same like brutal stuff, but like it, it's gonna be the theme wise. But I know what you mean, like. That that'd be cool to add a little like sound effect or interlude or something like that that make make it make it fit, feel the theme you know mm-hmm. that you're like in space and shit. Because actually, for the um, when death dwells, we don't have it. I fucked up. We don't have it on the Spotify version, but on the YouTube album, on the full album, we have an intro. Yeah. And um, I don't know if we can show that here. Cue intro. I'm just kidding. I don't know if you can do that, <laughs> but uh, if you can, that'd be cool. I know, okay. Um, we have a, it's an intro, and it's like um, real recordings, um, real like tapes from an exorcism from back in the day, and it's it's just like it's fucking sick. Yeah, it really adds to like what you're about to hear, you know. Like it, it's a good warning. <laughs> yeah. So then one thing, so like so interview we watch the lyrics and everything it seems like you guys are very like not business like but you are like very serious about okay like let's we're gonna do this and this is how we're gonna album out let's make videos around it like, pre-other band, right? yeah it's like you guys clearly think a lot yeah, I yeah. A lot of bands. i probably should be thinking about 2020 don't think about 2020. yeah yeah um is that like have you guys always been that or is that like something that just came around like a I year have. ago or? no i i have like yeah i feel like he's always had his music drive and like once, like, recently, when, once we started coming together and we actually recorded, you know, like, kind of just, our drive was, uh, I feel, more focused, you know, than well, before, you know. Yeah, we came back because of the people, really. Well, at least I did. Yeah. The, the last time that we came back, I was like, you know what, like, 
Because people would always come up to us at shows. Like, I, I know we've had our individual experiences. And just, you know, it makes me miss the music. Yeah, and they, they come, people. people come up to us and they're like, oh, like, hey, when are you guys playing a show? Or you're like, hey, you're, you're this person from Sodomy or this band. Or like, when's Sodomy playing? And like, what? And it would just be constant over the years. And I was like, you know what? Just fuck it. Let's bring it back. Like, why not? Because we never, like, quit or nothing. It's just kind of, we just kind of, like, shows died and yeah. we just kind of, like, took a break. Like, yeah. You know, and I mean, like, it I wasn't was, official. It I, was I, just kind of, yeah, like, I was just like, young and, like, I was just kind of more interested in partying, you know, to be honest. You know, I was just, like, living my youth and then kind of more, when I got a more serious job and, you know, better, and I was better funded financially. Like, you know, now I'm, like, willing to get stuff done and, you know, that's why we do yeah. take a, a bit more business, like, now, you know, because, you know, like, we basically, like, you know, we've had time where we've already chilled and, like, now when we're both, like, on it and we have the finances. I mean, we, we all we do, all we, everything we have, we finance ourselves. But, you know, like, now that we could do that, it's more taking it seriously and, like, and yeah, actually getting it out there, you know, because it's, it's, it's really cool actually getting your stuff out there, you know. And people, yeah, I think it's surreal and really cool that people it is like, like like shit that I make, you know, that we make, like, this is, I just find it funny, but, um, fuck, what were we, what were we talking about just now? It, just, like, how about you guys, the work ethic, like, yeah. if we were always, yeah. we're always, like, super serious and about so, it, you know? Because we took the, because it's, if you continue to push something when there's no drive, then there's no point, you know? Yeah, yeah. So when the drive is there and then you do push it, it'll, you, you feel, you see results, you know, and you exactly. actually, like, yeah. uh, put effort to it you know things do work out you know that's all it is you know if you're really passionate about something you know yeah. just put put your heart if your heart's in it too you know you'll get shit done you know you just got to be persistent mm -hmm. that's all it is you know like the more you put yourself out there the more you play you know like it'll really like show and like you'll you'll see results you know mm -hmm. it's fun too yeah like it's fun. okay uh, well, i remember what i was gonna say it's a hobby you know but like once you put an x amount of, um, of money into it you know It'd be nice to get something out of it, you know. Yeah. Like, um, on top and, of fans, yeah. You know, and by, by that I mean, like, to get something out of it, I don't mean like money. I mean like, like he said, fans, yeah. but like fans in other places that gives us that will give us the opportunity to go and play yeah, somewhere goes, else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that kind of like that's what I mean by like. Um, Even though right now it seems a little yeah kind of drought out there, but you know, like we in the so future, many you know, plans for twenty twenty, like playing yeah, out, yeah. out of the Bay Area. Like literally, we're gonna we were gonna play a house show right before. Um, like like oh, the, the quarantine, quarantine started. It literally you know? happened. We literally played a show. Oh, the day before quarantine was yeah. mandatory. We played our last show at the at game, game shop. shop. Do you know that game oh. shop downstairs? Yeah. So we played with a septic. Yeah. That night too, yeah. yeah. I have a, so I actually have a question for that video. Yeah. I'm kind of like Loki starting the pot of fire. Yeah. But it's at the end of the video that is on YouTube. Yeah. The dude throat kicks the mic, yells, and throws oh it. yeah yeah yeah. Is <laughs> that your mic? That was was that our mic? I don't think that was on. Like, no, I don't think that was on. Like, okay. I don't think he would do that. No, I don't think it was on. Was it? I think it might have been the guys who's throwing the show. It might have been. Wait, who threw the mic? Anthony. Uh, you know Anthony, remember? Person, At the end, he was like, oh, you know, go have a family thing. She would fuck you guys and then throws the mic. Yeah. Remember? Oh, yeah. I know he was like uh, upset a bit because uh, people broke. Like, Someone a shelf. broke a shelf, yeah, yeah. a bookshelf, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of crazy because I've been to so many shows there, you know, like where it's been packed and people will march yeah. and go all crazy, and, and it kind of sucks because he has like all these cool shit on the yeah, wall, memorabilia, like, yeah, you know, anime it's, it's movies, shit, you know, all yeah. vintage, you know, figures and everything, and like he has like he has like glass windows, and you're like, dude, I really hope nothing happens, you know, because it's really cool to have shows like in underground places like that, like. Mm -hmm. That kind of had no restrictions, you know literally what I mean? Like, 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 literally, it was underneath, downstairs, and, like, you could smoke and drink, you know? And, mm -hmm. and it was all ages, which is cool, because you get a more bigger audience and stuff. Yeah, but there's, like, a level of respect that's respected. Yeah, a respect just, like, at a local venue, because you, you wanted to keep going, but... So sometimes, it's, you know, shit happens. When people are marching, yeah. you know, it's not, like, intentional, but yeah. still, like... I host the shows here, yeah. so, like, I know what it's like, you know? Yeah, you kind of have to be on your toes, but yeah. it, it kind of sucked... It sucked because that was like the last show and that happened, but <laughs> but but I, I chilled with him and like he was still cool about it, you know. He's like, at least it was a shelf, you know. Like it was just he said, it was just like a bookshelf, so I don't think like too yeah. much. And when he said that, I don't think he was like he wasn't mad. He was just yeah, more I, like 
agitated. And yeah. Was just like, all right, guys. Like, you know, like, I'm pretty sure he knew, like, a lot of those people there, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, just, like, we all probably have been shows there before, so. That's actually where we recorded when Death Dwells. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, he has, like, a little space in the back. So, it's like, we fam- we're familiar with him, Anthony. And he's a cool-ass dude. And definitely, like. Shout out to Game Shop downstairs. Shout out to Game Shop downstairs. Downstairs. Game Shop. Follow them on Facebook. Yeah. So, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about, um, this is more curious, but it's also kind of pop screen. No, yeah, definitely. So, the more people I interview from San Jose and people I just, like, talk to off camera, right? Yeah. That I'm, I'm not doing interviews with? I haven't seen it, but I feel like I haven't gone to a lot of shows. But it's just, like, I'm always hearing about, like, these gatekeepers that, like, prevents the shows from happening. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Proud from mixing. Have you guys, is that, like, a, is that a thing? Or have you guys run into that before? Gatekeeping? Like, people don't want to have mixed shows? Yeah. Like, oh, you guys can't play here if you're not this band. Uh, I've never, I don't know, you ever, I never heard of that. I um, never, because, like, I've played a lot of shows that are, are kind of mixed bills, you know, like. Well, do you mean, like, outside of, like, extreme music, like, outside of, like, metal and punk? Or do you mean, like, black metal, death metal, thrash metal? I would feel like the latter, yeah. Oh, Like, okay. not that specific. Oh, no. I don't know. Have you? Well, I, I could get, I, I understand when people say, I'm going to throw this show, and it's like a black metal show, and, like, fine, we get it. But it's it's not, like. I don't. I don't find it like disrespectful or anything. Like, it's yeah, a black like metal show, you know, I get there's different types of audiences. Yeah, and themes, you know, and that. themes. But there's never been a time where we've been told that yeah, we can't play yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, like, I can see where it happens, you know, and like, I feel like as long as you're not being disrespectful and you just want to play this style of music, you know, at the show, yeah. it's not that bad. But like for us, I mean, like, we've been offered to play with black metal bands, you know, because you know it's kind of I guess in the extreme spectrum. Well, actually, we were like one of the only metal bands back in the day to play punk shows all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think yeah, we strictly only not yeah, strictly like, on purpose, like, but we only played punk. That's shows why, like, because you know, more of me locally, like, show wise, I would like go to local punk shows because, you know, there was more hardcore punk bands here, and like, you know, you just mix bills because you know you you make you make friends with people and you meet them, you know, like, yeah. And I feel like that that's just that's just dumb, you know. Like, why would you limit? The amount of people that would come to your yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, you would want more people. Because I, I threw, it wasn't a, my first show, but it was officially my first, like, public show. Like, it's, you know, for everyone, I threw one here in November 23rd last year. Or some, or, yeah, November 23rd. And it was, I had my other band, the bass player for the Foul Miles, he drums in another band called Kelly. And I had them come here and play. I had, this is Anthracnos, they're, what, they're, what do they call themselves? Are they Doom? No, like Stoner Doom. Stoner Doom. Stoner Doom band, they opened yeah. up. Then I had Kelly, they call themselves Stoner Rock. And then it was Sodomy. Then it was Glen Coco. And then it was a Garage Rock band. And then it was a Foul Mouse. And then I had yeah, this guy rap. Nice. And it was me rapping too. So yeah. it was rap, Garage Rock, just all kinds of d- different rock, um, death metal, fucking whatever you call yourself. Oh, yeah, we're like, like my other band, Glen Coco, is more like grindcore, power violence. Yeah. So, and. Uh, I was charging like five bucks at the door and we made like over 400 bucks. So like, and there was a lot of people here and everyone was getting down to every band. So like, I don't see why, I don't, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me, you know? Yeah. And But I, I get it, I get it. Like, it does make sense, but like, it doesn't make sense at the same time, you know? Yeah. Like, for me, it made sense to mix the bill because I was friends, like the people, the other bands who played were like members of my other bands already, you know? And they already knew each other. And even the people who listen to those like stoner bands and like those rock bands also were fans of like Sodomy and Black Coco and stuff like that, you know. So like, well, why not? And like, it, I was a host, so that to me that it wasn't a problem. But so yeah, I can see why. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Okay. Like, if I was gonna throw a show again, like if I wanted to, I could be like, oh, just just metal bands, and like I don't think that would be an issue, you know. Yeah. It's like a show, like a metal show. But that was just a special occasion because it was my other bands for a show. But a lot of people that I have talked to, like those bands on that bill, like Anthracnos and them, and like um, Sandy Pukes and Kelly, they love mixed shows. Like they are, they're talking about mixed shows, and they all they have the same opinion that I do, where they don't see a problem with mixed shows. They want more mixed shows because they like that shit. And I feel like nowadays people are more open, and they they like all kinds of bands. They just like live music, you know. So I don't know. I never ran into that problem to answer your question. Yeah, I never, I never heard about it. Yeah, no. I feel like, I mean, I'm sure it is out there, but I just, I guess, haven't experienced, I've always been playing mixed bills, and just in general, like, I don't really let 
like gatekeeping or elitism like bother me, you know, because I'm like, my mentality is like, if you do what you want to do, then who who gives a fuck about what other people really are trying to tell you what you you what to do yeah and i would be a hypocrite to tell you anything because i'm one yeah yeah, yeah. and and on top of that it's just like yeah i'm sure it is out there you know like there is there's always gonna be egos you know but you know me personally no i guess it makes sense if you're like if it's a fest you know like if it's a specific like if you're I don't expect to see a stoner rock band at California Death Fest or like anything of the sort, you know, smaller or bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like bars, if they're throwing like a bar show and they just got three bands, like, I guess I could see why. I could see that, but that's probably, I don't know. Yeah. I've never seen an issue with it. Mm-hmm. So to switch gears, right? To mm-hmm. get away from all that. Yeah. So you're in. Glen Coco, yeah. you're doing the chief, and then you also have, right? You emphasize it, and then you yeah. also have foul mouths. Yeah. Do you guys ever feel like you might be like strange or too thin, where like those nope. bands pull away any like creativity or riffs that could go into other? No. I don't think. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's kind no. of completely. It's actually um, different process. Even, yeah. even, even Glen Coke was like, like complete different types of riffs in yeah. sodomy, and for foul mouths is just like over here, and sodomy's yeah. over here. Yeah. And the chief doesn't have riffs. They got beats. They got beats. They got grooves and shit. They got bars. No, but I just think <laughs> it's just, you know, letting out creativity in different ways, you know? Mm-hmm. Really, like, it's like, it's, you'll have this, this space to come up with it if it's, like, how you feel, you know? Yeah. Like, different ways to express. Like, yeah. lyrical content, it's all different. All my projects are different. Yeah. I write, like, all the lyrics for all my projects. Yeah. All right. The other two projects. I write lyrics for Sodomy too, but so does he. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's very different, so no. But spread to thin in the sense of myself, yeah, like, because I practice Tuesdays and Thursdays with uh, Foul Mouths, and we practice Wednesdays. And then Fridays and Saturdays, I do a whole other thing. So my only free days are like Sundays and Mondays. Mm-hmm. And even then, it's just like I'm already, like, it's already busy, too busy. Uh, but he's I mean, like in six bands. So. Oh, there's more. <laughs> no, I've been jamming. I've been jamming with other people, you know, because I just like playing music too, you know. But you know, it's just like as long as you feel like you make a time for it and you like it, then you can, you know. I like it. <laughs> I like it, you know. But like, if you have time for it, you know, and you want it, you're passionate about it, then you'll you won't feel like a chore, you know. But especially right now, you know, quarantine, I feel like we have more time. To work on stuff on our own, you know, music wise too. So. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool, even though shit sucks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> can you see my eyes? The whole time, yeah. No, like, can you really see my eyes? Well, I'm, like, if I'm close to you. Oh. Yeah. So, one thing I wanted to ask you so, I wanted to, like, ask you a couple of interview questions, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Who's this for? Uh, it'll be for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, hot tonight. I don't know how to He's <laughs> like, fuck, Mary, kill. No, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> Go. Um, in your song, Helvet? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, yeah. How did you come up with, well, it's two parts, but I could tell her for them. How do you come up with like, the following, following, following thing? Like, well, that part you... is definitely influenced by Snoop Dogg. Oh, really? Yeah, the, uh, the follow me, follow me, follow me. Just that part? Yeah. Just the, the follow me part? Yeah. Just that? Like yeah. Just, uh, yeah, that's Snoop Dogg. Because he says the same thing. He says, follow me, follow me, follow me. Yeah, follow me. right. Oh, so what, I don't know what song it's it is. It's kind of homage. In a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was like, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. From Snoop Dogg. That, that's where that came from. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that's definitely, that's a big inspiration. Right. Am I right? And I was Especially like, at the that time. That was cool how you came up with that. Like, that's so, because it was like, you're keeping the flow, but it's like, oh, you threw that in there. I feel like a lot of people don't have those. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and on top like, of it, it's like, playing on the, the it's flow. It's riding the beat. Yeah, yeah. it's riding the yeah. beat, you know, so. Yeah. It's like you're literally following the beat. <laughs> yeah. So it's like with, uh, so we were talking about, like, death metal like a while back, right? And when I brought, like, oh, how do you feel about, like, the new death metal? It's more soft and technical, I guess. And you're like, nope, not about it. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to rap, though, Snoop Dogg, and, like, I said, listening to Chris Travis, I feel like, what is it about rap that you're more open to, like, newer stuff? Like Denzel Curry, Raider Clan, and all that. Oh, dude, I fucking love Raider Clan. Yeah. Uh, that's like, that's my shit. I actually have a whole fit. That's Raider Clan. Number one fan but, of Raider um, Clan. <laughs> wait, what was the question again? Like, like so it? what is it, how come it, with rap, you're more open to like the newer stuff? Oh. Like, with metal, you're like maybe. <clears throat> well, to me, like Raider Clan and Denzel Curry is kind of old already. To me. 
and I'm not open to the new stuff now, like as of right now. But I'm, I guess I'm okay. I don't like like that <laughs> that that new shit kind of like. The, the the lazy shit, you know? I, I wouldn't call it mumble rap because people call, like, Migos and then mumble rap, but I don't think that's mumble rap. I don't really think mumble rap is a thing, but, like, kind of people in the mainstream, like Lil Xan's an example, this, like, lazy rap, just kind of, like, fucking, like, Smoke Perp. I don't know if you know that kind of music. Oh, it's not like Yeah. Like, I like his songs, no, like, <laughs> when he first came song. out, but he fell out. He fell out. Have you heard the reset? Uh, freestyle? No. He he spit he rhymed Fortnite with Fortnite and spit <laughs> four lame ass bars about being in the limelight and then he gave up and started moaning. Like Really? It was really bad. I'll show you after <laughs> it's like, hilarious. Yeah, him like a little I feel like they're good like Blue. probably listen to like at a party or something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, exactly. they, they, they got that like, cat they 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 factor, I feel Okay, like so I guess in rap wise I, I am more yes, open. Yeah, because right. 'cause like, you know, I am more open because Raider Clan like Denzel Curry Xavier Wolf, you know, Space Ghost Per, Chris Travis, Betty Baker, and all of them. I have been listening to them for a while, mm-hmm. you know, and then. No. So now, and now, yeah, I can't forget. How did I forget now? Now was one of my favorite Nell. rappers. And Rel, fucking. And Rel, Rel, yeah. And then. All um, kinds of L. <laughs> when they all left Raider Clan, Denzel Curry became his own thing, and then Xavier Wolf and Chris Travis did like their, whole, their own thing too, such all the water boys and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I loved all that shit, but they kept it old school. You know what I mean? Like at least back in the day, they kept, they had like the, the the funk beats. You know, kind of like the three six mafia beats and the mm-hmm. flows, and I like that. Then they kind of made their own style, influenced by that, and it was more modern. And I really fuck with it. Mm-hmm. I like that. And well, I guess I think his death metal just he just likes old school. You know? Yeah, I just like my death metal. It's hella old school. And or at I least style, style wise, yeah. Yeah. like I wouldn't like. I mean, people will say Dying Fetus, especially new Dying Fetus, is like old uh, technical. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess it is technical, and I do enjoy it, but not as much as the grimy stuff, right? But I don't like technical death metal kind of like spawn of possession type of stuff. Like, I feel like that's just like it's not really captivating death metal at that point. It's just like being good at you know guitar. I don't know, yeah. you know. To me, it's not the same as. Old school death metal. Like it, it, not that I got gooder, but the more studio-ish. I guess. Yeah, the more. Oh, and the, the clean sound. The more, like the shit. more produced yeah. it sounds. Yeah. Like it just feels like, it's kind of like it loses. It's, it's it kind of turns mainstream. It's kinda magic. Kinda like yeah. Poppy. Not poppy, but you know, it's just it's just modern and it just just it's like gentrification of death metal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going to IKEA and like, yeah, all right. like spawn of possession instead of like kind of Cor- kind of corpse is like. The alley next to IKEA, but you get robbed that. Yeah, the first four albums. <laughs> yeah, the first four albums, and then my attention to like Home Depot or something. But yeah, um, I guess I don't know. That's why I'm open. I don't know why I'm open to more music. Because I- like you know, I do like the, the Lils too. Like I've seen Lil Punk live before. And, like I used to listen to him, and I think it's just more like you grow up and you kind of just care less about what you listen to. Not care less, but like more care less about what others think, I guess, and just kind of like, cause I used to get a lot of shit for listening to rap back in the day. Really? And like, now everyone's hella open about yeah. listening to their own shit. And I'm yeah. like, dude, like, yeah. so like this one time, this one. It's like, like you're either was like, metalhead or you're, you I was know? like, yeah, I was listening to rap. I was like 16, 17. And then like, like, so I've already been doing Sodomy for a while. And then like, I kind of like left the scene. Like I, I stopped like from like 17 to like 19. I kind of stopped coming around to shows. Mm-hmm. And like, like the older homies would come visit me and I'd be playing, I'd be listening to like Big L, you know, some rap shit. And then they'd be like, man, fool, you need to listen to some, to some like some metal. And I'm like, okay. Slayer, bro. And then I, don't know, <laughs> I just got open to more music as I got older. I guess I always liked it, and I just kind of cared less what people thought as I got older. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I think yeah. that's why you both are like that. Yeah. Like that. Anyway. So switch, switch gears to uh, t- Tavio. Yeah. Um, All you, buddy. All you. What is it about Melissa that her soul fate that you're like solo wise that you're so into? Oh, because I don't know. I just think like them as a band. Like, I feel like in metal, it makes it so like magical and like like a product of its time that you can't recreate it's just like it kind of took boundaries of a lot of different shit mm-hmm. and kind of like made it their own original you know like that's probably that's kind of why 
I like doing death metal because like, like I said, you know, death metal is just like thrash, but pushing the boundaries more. Mm -hmm. And for the time when Melissa came out, it was like, it was more like people didn't really hear those type of vocals. People didn't hear like, cause they sound like Maiden mixed with Priest, mm -hmm. but then they have like the power metal vocals, you know, yeah. that kind of like really push it over the edge. And then the lyrical theme is super satanic. You know, like if you literally look at all the lyrics and shit, like they say like Satan, like probably a million times. But, you know, like, it's actually a, a cult worship shit, you know, like, they actually talk about real Satanism and stuff. But for me, I just like that they were a band that pushed the boundaries, you know, kind of like Venom was a band that pushed the boundaries mm -hmm. with black metal. And Melissa, for me, is just, I don't know, like, for me, every every riff for me is not boring, you know, like, mm -hmm. they're a band, like, that's, they're a hidden gem because they can get a little proggy, but they're just still playing heavy riffs, you know, mm -hmm. just catchy riffs. So for me, like... It's just a classic, you know, a ripping album. Like, everything for me sounds like they knew exactly what they were going to do, you know? It's just, like, so on point for me. And I just, like, I like, like, heavy metal, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, they're, like, the OGs, you know, that, that really made metal more satanic, you know? You wouldn't have Slayer, you know, like, Hell Awaits. You wouldn't have, you know, all that satan satanic imagery that made metal heavier. I feel like you wouldn't have it without Merciful Fate. Because, you know, they were like, they really helped bands push the boundaries, you know. And then eventually, Possessed did what they did, Sepultura did, you know, really dark shit with more revisions and like, you know, more bands. I feel like they're one of the influences that pushed metal, you know, for heavy metal, at least. And I'm, I'm just a fan of 80s, bro. Yeah. It's like classic heavy speed metal. I just love that shit. <laughs> so are there like, well, I know you guys are death metal, but like, when you yeah. are coming up with songs or something, like, yeah. do you ever pull like inspiration from like a Korean song, obviously, because it's not as yeah, sounding. yeah. I mean, I feel like for me, the reason why I like old school metals because like they they have catchy riffs, you know, like mm -hmm. each riff is supposed to be captivating, you know, each riff has to have a meaning and like hit hard at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. it can't be too too like too long, you know, it's straight to the point. That's what I like about it, and I feel like Maiden, you know, like a lot of the chugs and like the heaviness that they pushed into heavy metal kind of like drifted into like, you know, more heavier style and like it does influence me, you know, because like when you're trying to play fast and articulate, you know, that came from heavy metal, you know, like made and doing all the harmonies and shit that like came from all that, you know, later influence, all the harmonies you'll see like in death or obituary and stuff like that, you know, that's why like you'll see a lot of the old school death metal guys, they'll be wearing like heavy metal shirts, you know, like yeah. other because back back in their day when they were pushing the boundaries they were like that was their god you know their fathers they saw the metal gods you know yeah so you have a lot of vinyls oh yeah, yeah. Right? yeah is there one just from like the cover itself not just like the, the song and all that but the cover that you like is one of your favorites Dude, don't ask that yet <clears throat> okay cover that's one of my favorites yeah like you said like that's a dope i would need a poster of that okay like, just like the uh i know there's like i already over said fate but like there's a lot of other bands like this power metal band called omen mm -hmm. their first album battle cry has like all these like fucking skeleton horsemen like pillaging this whole town and it's like all hand drawn mm -hmm. so i would like a poster of that Something like that, or like, like this one band, Savage Grace, their first EP, The Dominatrix, just has a chick on it, a hot ass chick, you know, from the '80s, wearing latex, you know, that always looked cool on a poster. Something like that, <laughs> or like, I'm trying to think. There's this cool album. Um, by fucking uh, Obsession called martial law it's like an ep and like literally it's like these skeleton these like these uh these guys wearing hoods with scythes and shit and like they have these stacks of marshals and it's like you know it's like a funny pun you know instead of like being spelled like martial law it's spelled martial like the guitar amp so it's like, like Eminem. yeah it's like martial law yeah like martial matters so it's like you know it's a play on words but it's also like i feel like such a classic like uh, example of the time, you know, 
There's a lot of shit, dude. Like, no, yeah, dude, you put me on the spot. Now I'm gonna have to come back with that record question. Like, yeah. Oh, no worries. Okay. Well, I was thinking that's like, because that is like when you're asking like individual yeah. questions. Yeah. Like I said, it's like you want to get like very nardwar about it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. hey, didn't you didn't see this one coming, right? Yeah. But yeah. also like, those, he knows too much. Yeah, know. that's like one question. Like once you <laughs> get it, you're know, like, I'm fucking. Yeah. No, nah, but it's cool. <laughs> it's like it's like you you actually follow me, like you probably pay more attention to my my uh, my page than my actual follow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know, actually. Oh no, yeah, dude. Like he brought up the helmet. Oh, uh, I know. Huh? I, I heard that too. <laughs> no, yeah, dude. I just I like collecting like old school shit. Like, or I go on discogs too much. You know, spend too much money on there. Just like I just like having that ultimate. I eventually want to like DJ. You know, like. 80s heavy metal like at, at bar i mean if bars were ever open soon but you know just in general yeah seems pretty cool how so i've heard of metal djing and mm. i see it all the time like on like show lists yeah. but i never actually like what does that sound like i feel like we mix in like hip-hop and stuff like it it goes here how does metal they all they do is just like you know they get turntables and right. instead of they don't actually like fuck with the song you know they just they're just basically making a metal playlist for you yeah. but I just feel like you're hearing it through better speakers and also like, you know, like I, f- I feel like the, the vinyl sound sounds a bit more, has more punch to it. Okay. Like uh, mixing wise, like whenever I listen to my records, like you don't get the same mixing wise from like digital from your phone, you know, say you stream something or even in your like if you have a good sound system and like you can you play your record, you'll hear like the bass really kick in, you know, and especially like with the 80s records, because like. I feel like, you know, they had they had way less to work with, but still make it sound hella loud and punch. Mm-hmm. And so everything's a little bit louder than maybe in a remaster, they would maybe mix something a little more down. Mm-hmm. But I like, like, in the more vintage recordings, it's more p- punch to the music, I think, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's just really it's kicks, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, as far as that, it's just it's just like make, mixing a playlist. You'll, you'll switch one song from one record to another and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, it's just that's what I like to do. Just drink and listen to heavy music. I like to do ketamine. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we're on like different vibes, but we vibe at the same time too. You know. Yeah. That's actually how we wrote. Um, well, we don't have it out yet, but we have this really sick ass song. Yeah, that's all I can say. It's hella sick. It's a sick ass song. It's gonna come out on Dead Space, and we just we like did psychedelics and ketamine, and we just wrote it. Yeah. I took shoes to Gaza. This isn't going to be on camera, but that's good. Right? You know, I wanted to do it. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, this right. is a mission right here. Yeah, I know how you're like, you signed your contract right you're there. Like, you can't see me. Yeah, you, you can't see me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. take it down now. My mom just saw it. But if you ever, if you ever, like, do you write music? No, I, like, used to play, like, back in the day. Yeah. Like, in LA, yeah, but yeah. After that, I just didn't. Like, it kind of, like, I feel like it naturally drifts away. But yeah. I still, like, appreciate it. Like, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I feel like, uh, at this point, my, like, I've already done other things. Let me just focus on that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, if you want to do one thing, it's like, you ever done focus on that. No, not yet. Not yet. I, I want to do, I want to try acid. Like, to, like, Damn. see what it's like. But yeah. I can't see the right place. I don't know. Yeah? Okay, cool. I mean, I don't got him. It's a joke. <laughs> I got him. Uh, I mean, don't got him. <laughs> um, well, real quick. I'm sorry. I know I've kicked you guys an hour at this point. Right? Let's do it. We don't want our shit to do. It's fine. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, one of the last questions I wanted to ask you guys was, so like I mentioned, like, you guys are very, like, business about it, right? Um, I'm a business man. From 2013, I guess, when you guys really started to, like, now and everything you guys done between then, What's a piece of practical advice should we give to a band to actually like grow as a band or as an artist? You know, two different things. Well, I'll say one thing. It's probably depending on the person or the people, it won't answer those questions. But one thing I will say, a piece of advice is mm-hmm. start early, record early. Like even if it's shitty, just record, record, record yeah. videos, take pictures, record music. Like, because that's one thing that. You can't find a lot of stuff from um, 2013 till now, you know, like you, there's more stuff of us now in the yeah, last two years. Yeah, we wish if, if we actually got it down, like, it'd be cool to have that to look back on, you know. Yeah, there's like very few videos of us back in the day, 
and the ones that are up, they're all like the older other guys' songs. They're not like our yeah. new songs. And there's some songs that, that we don't even play no more that that never got captured on film and that that we forgot about. So record everything. My my advice would probably be just just set goals. You know, if you're really about it, you know, just make sure. If you're really about it and want to make the band work, make sure the guys you work with are passionate just as much as you are, you know, willing to put as much as you want to put so that you don't stress your own self out. And then on top of it, you know, just set goals, you know, like, hey, we need to do this by this week, you know, or like, hey, let's try to record this. Hey, let's try to get work on a, a, a new song or by this practice day, let's try to, you know, make on work on a design and have it by this day, you know. I feel like if you're more setting goals, you can like you'll you'll accomplish term. yeah short term goals you'll it'll make it easier to reach more higher goals you know that you can as a structured band you know I just say you know just find the right people to jam with that have the same you know ethic and are about it as you are and that's the best you can do that's the best advice I can give you know because at the end of the day you know uh, people are are who they are you know you really don't know if you're gonna work well with other people until you actually have a band you know because it's like a relationship you know. You really just need to, if you're about it and want to make it somewhere, you know, you know, set goals. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, the best piece of advice, though, is just have fun. Yeah. That's good. That's it. If but you're not having fun, then why? Yeah, if you're not having fun, then why the fuck, why the fuck you, you're doing that shit? Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you joining me. This is fun. Was cool. Thanks, man. No, yeah. Always. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you for Okay, now the real questions. All right, who would you fuck, Mary kill? I don't know. I don't know. The only question I didn't ask you guys uh-huh. that I had was for particularly in the Gotham City shirt, your favorite shirt. <laughs> uh, it's one of, one of my favorite shirts. Oh shit! I'm glad hey, you didn't ask that. Hey, <laughs> you should ask him about his. Nah, just shirt. kidding. 